हेलो एवरीवन टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द मशीन कोडिंग ऑफ लो लेवल डिजाइन ऑफ एन इन्वेंट्री मैनेजमेंट सिस्टम ऑफ एन ई कॉमर्स वेबसाइट सो बेसिकली इन एनी ई कॉमर्स वेबसाइट दे आर मेनी सेलर्स वेन एवर यू गो ऑन अमेजन यू कैन सी दैट फॉर एवरी प्रोडक्ट इट इज बींग सोल्ड बाई मल्टीपल सेलर्स दो सेलर्स हैव देयर ओन वेयर हाउसेस एंड दोज वेयर हाउसेज कैन कंटेन मल्टीपल प्रोडक्ट आइटम्स so what is inventory it is simply the number of counts of a given product sold by a given seller for example a seller can have 100 samsung galaxy m13 smartphones so in that case in that case the value of inventory is like 100 for samsung galaxy phones this is the url for the question on code gym machine coding link and you can go through the question yourself i will just discuss the important methods the first one is create seller for this is a inventory management system so there are going to be sellers they are going to be products and then we have will also be including inventory in our discussion and implementation so every seller is going to have a unique seller id and a list of pin codes where they can deliver the goods and a list of payment modes which they supports which will be actually a sub list of this whole set the next method is create product each product will have an id name and price for example product 1 can be bot stone 650 bluetooth speaker one thing uh, even though a single product can be sold by multiple sellers the price across seller for the same product will remain the same this is just for simplicity next is add inventory once an product has been created in the system multiple sellers can add inventory for the product if they wish to sell it for example a seller decided to add 50 blue pure cotton t-shirts in its inventory this value delta will always be a positive integer the next is get inventory we want to check how many items for a particular product is particular seller has in their warehouse Uh, next is get sellers whenever you go on amazon on a product page before buying you actually you have now already selected the product and destination pin code is selected based on your address and item count you also selected so you then you sell want to fetch the list of sellers who can deliver that particular product to that destination pin code and also support the payment type which you have selected so this method get sellers does that Uh, for the customer it returns the list of all sellers sorted by seller id next once you have that list of sellers then what the customer does is they select one of the seller id and they place an order now this create order verifies everything once again like whether the seller exists or the seller delivers to that pin code and seller supports that payment mode and seller has that at least product count of that product in their warehouse once after verifying all this what it does is it creates an order with order id and then reduces the product inventory from that seller by product count and payment mode set which was supported uh, can be one of these which the customer selects now as you can see the get sellers method and get inventory method are sort of read operations on the product inventory that is product count of a particular product that a seller has while a create order is actually write on that particular the same item that is product count for a given product id for a given seller so at no point of time these two read will conflict will occur or be called concurrently with this right right operation that is create order this is done to maintain correctness and eventually con consistency in the system let's discuss the solution code now in any low level design question basically the first thing that you should determine is the na which are the entities or data classes involved and each time there are most of the time there is going to be a corresponding manager class once you have identified the entity classes then it becomes uh, easier to go forward so for example in this solution class there is a create seller method so it gives us the clue that there is going to be a seller class which will be a data class and it will have it its a structure based on these three parameters next there is a create product method so we quickly get the clue that there is going to be a product class and a corresponding product manager class which will have these three fields 
now there is again this add inventory get inventory create order and get sellers which are mostly the read and write operations on our in invent product inventory or you can say product count so they will have a separate inventory manager so for now just let's just do the simple ones which is the class seller and class product first let's discuss these two simple entity classes and their corresponding managers and then we go for the inventory manager so in class seller there are basically there is a seller id and there is a list of pin codes where the seller can deliver the goods and then there is a list of payment modes which the seller supports i have converted this list to a hash set because i wanted order of one efficient of operations on the serves pin code method and supports payment type method that was the reason again i haven't used any thread safe data structures in this class because after initialization there are no write operations on this class there are only read operations so that would not have been efficient to use a thread safe data structures which take actually more space so this is the class seller there is no seller id here we'll get to see it in the seller manager so this seller manager manages the collection of sellers it is seller id versus the seller object now it has two methods create seller which is nothing uh, but basically create a seller object and put it into the uh, sellers uh, concurrent hash map and the second method is get seller which is a simple read from this concurrent hash map now i haven't used a simple hash map instead i used a concurrent hash map here because in a multi threaded environment uh, a simple hash map is either going to give you concurrent modification exception or it the data will get corrupted next we have our class product the second entity or data class you can say it has three fields product id name and price now there are no more getters or setters in this product class and also you should remember the same thing in a uh, low level design interview that do not write unnecessary getters and setters because you are already running low on time and you do not want to waste your time writing unnecessary code next this product class will be uh, managed by our product manager which is again uh, keeping the list of products product id versus product object in a concurrent hash map same as the sellers object now this has two methods again create product create a product and put it into the products map and the second is get a product which is fetching a product from the products map now once we have done these two simple entity classes it becomes easier to do the inventory thing and go forward with our solution we have already discussed seller manager and product manager next go for the data which will be written and read by multiple threads which is the inventory that is the product count of each product in a seller's warehouse so for that we have inventory method manager to take care of all the methods now inventory manager keeps the inventory data in a two level map map inside of a map so this is product id versus this is seller id versus product count the product count will be is kept in an atomic integer uh, we could have kept it in an integer also since we are keeping two concurrent hash maps but i am much more comfortable with the syntax of an atomic integer that's why i am using this now uh, basically why we are using this structure why not we are using product id instead of using product id versus seller id why we are not using seller id versus product id the reason is this method get sellers so for a given product id we have to actually go through all the sellers which have that product some items in that product id or who sell that product and have some of the items in their warehouse whose count is denoted by this atomic integer the benefit of using a concurrent hash map is that uh, it's thread safe also the operations will be update and read operations will be order of one let's go through these are mostly the read and update operations only let's go through all the methods in our solution class we already uh, did this create seller and create product in the entity classes uh entity manager classes the first me method related to add inventory is uh this add inventory method so we verify whether the product and seller are valid if both are valid then we just hit this add inventory now in this inventory class there is one important method which is will be used everywhere this get inventory internal method 
we actually what we do is in all the update and read operations which fetch this atomic integer which keeps the count of the product or the inventory for a particular product in a seller's warehouse once we have this atomic integer it is easy to return its value or increase or decrease it so that's what this internal inventory internal method does and initializes if initialize is true then it actually initializes the value rows inside the map else it just finds and if it doesn't find anything it returns null so let's go through this method once now uh, if initialize is true then it it puts if there is no existing map for a given product id again it fetches the internal map which is all sellers inventory this will not be null in case the initialize is true it will if initialize is false then this can be null again if initialize is true then we initialize the second level that is the count or product count of the for each seller and finally we return the atomic integer value or the product count in atomic integer once we have this atomic integer then it's very easy we just do a add and get delta and inventory will be added this is a thread set method and it is more efficient than using synchronization uh, because it is a compare and set and we are avoiding synchronization here and synchronization is costly uh, because of the resources it takes because locking is costly so it's more efficient to use atomic integer here the next method is get inventory get inventory is again simple what we do is uh, we just fetch the inventory internal that is the atomic integer and we keep initialize equal to false because we are only fetching so if it is null we return zero else we return its actual value this is what the get inventory is all about the next method is uh, after the get inventory we have got the get sellers so get sellers is basically when a customer is on a product page and it they since they are on a product page so they have already selected the product and they have already selected how many items they want to buy for that product and what is their address which gives destination pin code and the payment type so based on that uh, we need to find the list of sellers who will be selling those so that customer can select a one of those sellers so for this what we do is we fetch a list of sellers from inventory manager and sort it by natural order because that is what it is being asked in the question and return sellers so let's go through this get sellers method what we do is uh, we go through this fetch the outer map if the map is null that means that product is not being sold by any of the seller and we return this empty list what this method does it returns an array list next we go through all the we've, once we have the internal map that means we have the key value pairs that is all the seller ids with the count who are selling that particular product so we go through all the sellers and check for the validity inside each seller that is the seller should serve the pin code which is given by the user and seller should also support the payment type which is given by the user seller manager class uh, helps us get the seller object and then what we do is the final check is the seller should have enough number of items which the customer is asking so greater than or equal to item count number should be there if they are there then sellers we add that seller id to the list of sellers which we will return so this is how the list of sellers is built for get sellers once we have the get sellers then what the user will want to do is they will want to create an order they will select a seller from that and they will want to create an order but before creating order it's better that we verify everything that is we verify whether the product should exist seller should exist the pin code should be serviceable and payment mode should be supported if all these are true then what we do is we call the reduce inventory method and if that reduce inventory method succeeds then we do order placed else we do insufficient product inventory reduce inventory is simple again we fetch the atomic integer value using this get inventory internal class and in this case we do initialize equal to false because if the inventory is not it has not been initialized then we just need to that not enough inventory is there so if existing inventory is null then return false else we do a while loop why do we do a while loop because here we have to we cannot simply do an add here because we cannot the number of items in a 
seller's inventory for a given product cannot go negative okay so if it goes negative we do a break and we do a compare and set we could have done a synchronized operation here but that would be costly uh, so we do a compare and set and since multiple threads or multiple customers can be try can be trying to buy the same product from the same seller so in this case multiple threads will be trying to reduce this product inventory data and so we need to do an while operation so that if it fails even though it fails multiple times it will either eventually succeed or will run out of products for in that seller's warehouse if it succeeds we return true else we return false this is how our order is created now our code is done let's run it on the code gym environment now our code is complete let's run it in the code gym environment so control a control c uh, we are doing question number four code is loaded control a control v and let's run it so basically i wanted to show you one thing uh, yes now it has given compiler error uh, that there is a duplicate interface definition so what happened was uh, when initially i copied this code default code to co my local editor from code gym editor then this code was commented and you will need this code uh, because uh, you want to get auto complete method auto complete in the uh, your local editor and you want to avoid compilation errors so when pasting it your code or your solution back to the code gym editor you need to comment this code at the bottom you will see so i have commented it back this class helper and this interface q0 interface and i run it again now it should pass all the test cases it has passed all uh, the sample test cases two out of two let's submit it to run pass all the test cases now it will take a while uh, it may happen quickly or it may take sometimes it take a minute or a two uh, but it will happen so what i will do is i will take the all this code and put it in a blog and put the link to that blog in the youtube video description that you are watching right now and i will also put the link in the comments as well all 12 test cases have passed now and it took around i guess uh, 24 seconds sometime it may take less or sometime it may take more but the thing is seeing your code run and pass all the test cases will give you the confidence that in an interview if i get this or a similar question then i will be able to do it because i was able to do it here and that is a very good thing to have to that confidence that you can take in the interview now uh, this is all from us today uh, thanks a lot for watching i wish you the best of luck for your interview preparation and hope you get a much higher compensation in your upcoming role thanks a lot bye